Hey, Andre, did you know that 2024 is going to be the year of the midsize truck, but more specifically, the year of the off-road midsize truck? You betcha. There is many new entries hitting the market within weeks. So what are we going to do in this video? We're going to run down the most off-road capable midsize pickup trucks from each brand, and there's a lot, and tell you how to differentiate between them because it's getting more and more complicated as this progresses. Yeah, so we're going to talk about the Ford Ranger, the Honda Ridgeline, the Rivian R1T, the Nissan Frontier, the Colorado by Chevy, of course, <laughs> the GMC Canyon, and the Jeep Gladiator, and finally the Toyota Tacoma. So this is going to be a long video, but if you guys are looking at buying one of these uh, mid-sized trucks this year, we're going to let you know exactly every off-road model, how much they cost, and what we think of them at the end of each of these uh, model lineups. So let's get into it with Ford, Andre. Yes, and this is not in any specific order, but no. we chose Ford first because, first of all, they have a lot of choices. And also, they're not on sale quite yet with their 2024 models. So let's start with the most off-road worthy Ford, uh, which, of course, is the Ford Ranger Raptor. Starts at $56,960, Andre, and this is a brand new model uh, that lives in other places in the world like Australia, but for the first time is coming to America and not with the diesel engine, but with a 3-liter twin-turbocharged EcoBoost V6, 405 horsepower, 430 pound-foot of torque, 11 inches of ground clearance, approach angle is 33 degrees, break over 24, departure 26, and what are the off-road features? Well, it's a special truck because it's borrowing some of the technology from the Bronco Raptor, right? And it has the shocks, the 2.5 inch Fox live valve shocks, which are very fancy and of course adjustable and drive modes, including Baja mode, of course, but it doesn't have the same tire package as the Bronco Raptor. It has a 33 inch BF Goodrich KO3 tire. By the way, KO3 tire is the first manufacturer I know of from the factory using the new KO3. Yep. Uh, and so let's say you don't quite have uh, that much need for the ultimate midsize Ford off-roader. How about the Tremor? Is that still around? No. No? Not anymore. What not anymore. to the Tremor? So right now, you know, from 2019 to 2023, Ford has offered an, F, uh, an Ranger Tremor over the last couple of years. But it's going away in 2024 generation. I'm not sure quite why. But the Tremor Rangers may be available in other markets like Australia, but not here. All right, let's start with the next kind of off-road package, one down from the Tremor, and that, of course, is the FX off-road package. Starts at 42,384, the XLT model. It gets a 2.3-liter turbocharged EcoBoost inline four, 270 horsepower, Andre, 310 pound-foot of torque. XLT and Lariat trims will be available with the 2.7 V6 this summer, 315 horsepower, 400 and uh, 400 pound foot of torque, ground uh, clearance is 9.3 inches, uh, approach 30, to break over 23, departure 25. And what are the off-road features? Yeah, well, be first, uh, first, before we get to FX4 features, uh, let's just uh, compare it to the Raptor really quick. About two inches less ground clearance. Yep. All the angles are a little bit less, of course, because the ground clearance shrinks a little bit. But I love that they're offering two different engines, right? So if you don't want to pay for the V6, um, you can go with a standard four-cylinder turbocharged engine, like you said, which actually is carryover. But the FX4 off-road package costs only $1,295, so $1,295. And of course, it has a couple of things. First of all, all-terrain tires, 17 or 18-inch wheels, uh, then a rear locking differential, and uh, of course, no Fox shocks. But terrain man management system is there without the Baja mode, though. Yeah, and also skip plates for the engine's transfer case and fuel tank. Off-road screen shows pitch roll and other important off-road information. Uh, how about an electronic locker? Is that available on the FX4? Uh, yes, but also it's available separately. Mm -hmm. So if you don't want to spring for that FX4 package of $1,295, you can get a locker at $420. I love that Ford is offering actually a few gradations and a few features here. Now, there is a fly in the ointment, of course, mm. and that is that the new Ranger was supposed to be here during the recording of this video, yes. but it has been delayed because, of course, it's built on the same chassis in the same plant as the Bronco, and Bronco demand has been hot, so I'm guessing at this, but I think that they're finally catching up to Bronco demand just in time to get behind on Ranger demand. Yeah, and also the factory was shut down for like a month and a half. Because of the Because strike. of the strike, like, yeah. yeah. So that did not help. How are we going to drive this thing? You betcha. When? 
I don't know. <laughs> okay. <laughs> supposed to be November, but it's not. So many of these we've driven, but uh, you know, some of them obviously um, are delayed, and so. But, we have, I, but I, I but I have talked to the engineers about the Ranger Raptor okay. and the FX4. And uh, I crawled all the way around these trucks, so that's what we know so far. All right, let's go to kind of the dark horse uh, that uh, most people forget about because they think it's more of a car uh, than a truck, but it is indeed a truck. It's, of course, the new Honda Ridgeline Trail Sport, which starts at 46355 um, Another one we haven't technically driven yet, but that's only uh, uh, very straightforward because it's not much different from the previous generation. In yeah. fact, it's very similar to it. Ground clearance is 7.6 inches, same as a standard truck, uh, though the AT tires might give it a little bit more ground clearance. Um, approach 24, 20 degrees, 20.4 degrees, break over 19.6, departure 19.6. Uh, the specs haven't changed for 2024. This model is mainly an appearance update. How about the off-road features, Andre? Altering tires, this is new for Trail Sport, right? So they're beefier than before. Of course, the other option is the HPD, Honda Performance Division, which we can mention in a second, but also extra steel underbody protection is available on the Trail Sport. So here's the thing with this 2024 Trail Sport Ridgeline. I expected it to be like an all new vehicle, but it's not. So uh, maybe that's still coming uh, and quite a bit less ground clearance than in the Ranger, of course, but it's more of a kind of a street worthy truck that can go off road because their all wheel drive system is really amazing. All right, so now there is a new HPD Adventure package. Andre starts at 45,590 for the sport model. And what do you get for that? Well, it has a slightly more off roadish wheel and tire package once again, and a, a few styling upgrades, but it's just one level below the trail sport. The whole package, the Adventure package costs 4,465 bucks on top of a regular Ridgeline. Yeah, just get the Trail Sport is my recommendation. I, I would agree because it's only, what, less than $1,000 more for the Trail Sport. Now, we've had a lot of experience with the Honda Ridgeline, specifically not this one, but, you know, the one that's very similar to it. Uh, and there's a couple quick uh, little things that I want to say about it. First and foremost, by far the biggest seat in the midsize class. I'm talking about the rear seat. Uh, not yeah. only can you fit, like, human beings in there without cu <laughs> cutting their legs off, uh, but it's got this feature where you can lift the seat backs up so you can stick a bike in there. So if you guys are, you know, mountain bikers, not dirt bikers, you can put a bike in there. Uh, however, so it's like flattish floor. Flattish floor, yeah. yeah. However, there is a caveat. Every time, most of the times we've tested it off-road, uh, the transmission has thrown a code saying it's overheating. Yeah, and it's a nine-speed now. Yeah. Uh, it used to be a six-speed uh, before. Uh, yeah, because I think it's not, it doesn't have low range. You know, that's the issue with the Ridgeline, exactly right? Exactly right, Andre. Um, so if you have gearing to help you, like, for example, on either the Ranger Raptor or some others, uh, the engine and transmission are a little bit not working as hard. But in this case... And I do want to... I misspoke, not every time, but a few times that we have taken it off-road, it has... Yes. Uh, it has overheated. Uh, at least, it, I don't think it's overheated, but... Well, it, call it, it didn't leave us stranded. No, no, no. It just cool it off and keep driving. Keep, keep driving, yeah. All right, now we've got a bit of an uh, interesting uh, electric truck in yep. this. It's kind of a tweener, somewhere between a mid-size truck and a full-size truck. And, of course, we're talking about the Rivian R1T. Uh, most recently, all the electric trucks, including the Cybertruck, of course, are breaking all the conventions. Uh, and this one is no exception. Uh, so let's talk about the R1T. Um, with the Adventure Pack, starts at 82850 for the dual motor. Um, and that's expensive, Andre. It is expensive, <laughs> but it's better than before, yes. right? Because we're talking about the dual motor here. Yes. The quad motor is even more expensive. So I like that Rivian is actually bringing more options to the market. The dual motor still has a lot of power, 533 horsepower, and it's kind of a base configuration. Then it, um, you can step up to a performance dual motor configuration at 665 horsepower. And these still mind-boggling numbers, right? Because we talked about 400 horsepower Ranger Raptor, and now we're into 500 uh, horsepower territory and even 600 horsepower territory. And even 835 horsepower, depending on the with model. Four, four motors. If you go with four motor, and that's the one, of course, that we've uh, had a lot of experience with. Yeah. Um, um, you know, nothing beats at the drag strip, maybe the new Cybertruck. Uh, we've seen videos where that's happened, but we have yet to test it ourselves. Uh, ground clearance, Andre, is anywhere from 7.9 to 14.4 inches. Of course, huge. It's got air suspension, yeah. so it's adjustable. Uh, however, the weight is also huge. 
The weight is heavy. Yes. Yes. And actually, it's around 7,000 pounds. It's similar to the new Cybertruck and way more than the Ranger Raptor weighs or any Honda Ridgeline out there. Uh, but I, I, I like their ground clearance. I like their approach, departure, and breakover angles, which are about approaches 35 and a half. Breakover is 30 degrees, which is great. Departure is also great at 26.4. But, dude, uh, we've driven it recently. Uh, Alex and Case took it out. And for crawling situation, the quad motor, it's kind of iffy. It doesn't want to put power down in, in certain s cases. Yeah, what happens is uh, the electronics are trying to figure out what wheel has the most traction. And so you can be in a situation where you've got a floored or potentially floored and nothing's turning and nothing's moving. Uh, once again, I'm a big not to be you know down on electric vehicles off-road but i'm a big fan of just traditional lockers and setting power to all four wheels at the same time uh, not having the computer kind of uh, decide where the power should go uh, it does have an all-terrain package adds 34 inch all-terrains which are yeah. really nice underbody protection multiple drive modes including multiple off-road modes auto rock crawl these are just basically lines of code um, the change the ride height ride comfort and brake, brake region and stability control a lot of electronics, Andre, um, and so far, um, in our testing at least, uh, still not as good as something that you can triple lock. But I, I'm curious about the dual motor. I want to take that off-road immediately as soon as we can. All right, now let's, this, is, this is weird that I'm saying this, okay? Yeah. But this is potentially either the second oldest or the oldest uh, vehicle of the bunch. <laughs> and it just was introduced to me, it seems like yesterday. I'm, of course, talking about the Nissan Frontier. Uh, you want to talk yeah. about the Pro 4X and before we get to the Pro X? Yeah, so we just talked about $80,000 Rivian. Yeah. Now we're half the price. Uh, so the Pro 4X is still around. Like you said, it was renewed completely a new generation in 2022. So we're entering its third year. Uh, and the price actually is reasonable compared to some others. Starts at, for the Pro 4X version, at $40,955, including destination. By the way, all the prices we mentioned is including destination charges because that's really important. Uh, and it comes with not a turbocharged engine, but a basic naturally aspirated 3.8 liter V6 with 310 horsepower. Ground clearance, Andre, 9.5 inches. Yep. Uh, 9.8 to the rear diff, so very specific there. Front okay. diff is 9.5, which is actually good because people, manufacturers, I should say, tend to forget about the diffs for some reason, yeah. <laughs> depending how they measure it. Approach is 32.3 yeah. degrees, break over 19.6. Departure, 23 degrees. How about the off-road features? Well, it has a lot. So it does have some skid plates, steel ones, um, and includes, of course, transfer case and fuel tank protection. 32-inch Hankook Dynapro tires, 82s, is what comes from the factory. And Bilstein shocks, so not adjustable. So this is not a Raptor competitor. This is not a Ranger Raptor competitor. It's basically an FX4-ish competitor, right? Or even a Tremor competitor that's, well, no longer here. Um, I would like to see this, a slightly bigger tire, a little bit more ground clearance in the future, maybe like the Warrior truck, right? That's not around. Now, if you guys live in, say, Florida or someplace where you potentially don't need or want all-wheel drive, there is a Pro X, starts at 37995 It's very similar to the uh, Pro 4X, just not four-wheel drive. And actually looks very similar. Yeah. Remember, we saw it at the event yes. that we went to. Now, um, over at our um, podcast channel, TFL Talk, if you want to go there, OldTFL.com. We just did a, uh, uh, a predictions for 2024. And one of the predictions that we did uh, was that uh, Nissan's going to build the Warrior Concept uh, Frontier and not build it. <laughs> they're going to show it and not build it. and not build it, yeah, for next year. So well, we'll, we'll see if that happens, Andre. Well, hopefully they show it and build it. What, what, what do you think of this truck? I mean, uh, this is certainly the one for all of you uh, guys and gals out there who do not like turbochargers. Yeah, who like traditional powertrains. Who like V6s. It, and nine-speed automatics, yeah, uh, which this has no manual transmission anymore in the Nissan Frontier. And I think it's kind of a, we, we always describe it as an honest truck, right? It, it will do what it says it does, but sometimes it runs out of ground clearance, like we tested it uh, in the Rocky Mountains. Yeah, you know, they updated it um, and they kind of got it up to the r newest level of, or the most recent level of mid-sized trucks and now of course all the mid-sized trucks are kind of going past that to turbocharged four cylinders and all and, kinds of crazy off-road packages and bigger tires bigger tires yeah. so, so this thing feels like it's one generation behind but sometimes that's a good thing 
uh, because it's proven technology. All right, speaking of unproven technology, <laughs> or at least new technology, yeah. let me be fair, let's talk about the Chevy Colorado, a truck that you own, Andre, full disclosure. Yes, so I do currently own a 2023 trail bus, but for 2024, there's a tiny price increase across the board, but there's a new big dog in town. Yeah, let's start with that. The ZR2 Bison starts at 60,000. Oh my God, 60,000 for a mid-sized truck, $95. And that's before any market adjustments or, you know, Chevy dealer. Uh, we, yeah, we're not considering any adjustments. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> 2.7 turbocharged high output inline four. Uh, now I think all of the Colorados come with that 2.7, but now they're all high output, so they all have the same. They got rid of the silliness of having different horsepower levels. Yeah, except for the work truck. The work truck still has that kind of a detuned version of that engine, but the rest of them, they call them turbo maxes. So 310 horsepower, like you said, and 430 pound-feet of and, torque. And that torque came into its own uh, when we drag raced, drag raced it against the new Tacoma. And if you want to see that video, oldtfl.com. And we're yes. not going to tell you the results. Just go there and you can see that video and see if it beat the uh, new Tacoma. So this Bison truck, the yep. ZR2, is more expensive than the Ranger Raptor that we just mentioned. Yes. But uh, I think it's also next level tech because look, at ground clearance is 12.2 inches. Approach is really great, 38.2 degrees. Breakover 26.9 and departure is 26 degrees, which is a little bit better than the Ranger, isn't it? Yeah, I'm looking at the numbers and it is a little bit better. Yeah. And maybe the way it's even better... Uh, and let's face it, if you do a lot of off-roading, bigger is always better. We're looking at 35 Goodyear Wrangler Territory MT tires with 17-inch uh, beadlock-capable wheels. Uh, and that's up from the 33s on the Ranger Raptor. Yeah, so big tires, that's where most a lot of that ground clearance also comes in. And the Bison, of course, protection, protection, protection. It's got boron steel skid plates, five of them. It's got steel bumpers front and rear. The front bumper is winch-capable. Um, so that's what you get for that bison, and that's why you're paying over 60 grand. Now, if that's a little too rich for your blood, which it is for many of us, yeah. you can go down one. Uh, now we're talking about the Chevy Colorado ZR2. Starts at $48,690, 2.7 liter, same output as the bison, uh, 310 horsepower. Ground clearance, now we're down to 10.7 inches. Uh, approach is 38.6, which is better than the bison because of the different bumper. It doesn't have yep. that AV yep. bumper. Breakover 24.8, departure 25.2, and off-road features, Andre. What size well, of tire are we to up well, to or down we're, to? Well, we're down to a meager 33, like the Ranger Raptor. Uh, by the way, both of these, the ZR2 and the ZR2 Bison, have DSSV Multimatic shocks. But this price, 48690 now almost seems affordable. You know, since we've been talking 50s and 60s and, you know, other prices. You know, I could see a lot of people out there in the comments saying we are completely out of our <laughs> minds with these numbers. <laughs> hey, don't blame the messenger. <laughs> Go on the configurator and you'll be this shocked. Is, this is the latest data. <laughs> All over again. Well, but well, It's right behind us. I'm, I'm looking at it. By how much it costs. Um, what's next, Andre? We're looking well, the trail boss. Okay. This is the truck I own. Yep. Uh, so, no, no, tip to the wise. What? Don't forget the tech package. <laughs> Sorry, it, it, inc <laughs> it includes adaptive, uh, and not adaptive, just cruise control. <laughs> it doesn't. Just basic cruise control. But yours doesn't have cruise control. No, because I forgot the convenience package. I thought it was a technology package. It's called convenience. Oh, is it? Sorry. All right, don't forget the convenience package. Okay, the engine is the same. Yes. So as the other ZR2s, uh, but you have less ground clearance, it, of course. It is, it is crazy, dude, that, that, that you have to get a convenience package to get... You know, in to 2024, get, to get you know uh, a cruise control on a thirty-eight thousand dollar truck. Yes, I know. I I I, I know. But, I, I'm with you guys. But as you will see, thirty-eight thousand four ninety-five is less than a lot of other new trucks like the Tacoma TRD off-road, which we'll mention in the in a few minutes. But ground clearance comes down on the trail bus to nine point five inches. By the way, I off-roaded my truck several times. I I hit my rear differential on a couple of little rocks so yes the ground clearance is okay-ish but i would rather get that bison i guess for ground clearance now the off-road features were down to 32 inch goodyear territories down from 33s down from 35s two inch suspension lift from a base model a wider chassis three inches wider front track how does that work well yeah it's it's mostly using kind of the offset of the wheels and tires so but that helps for stability i i love that actually all right um now we're down to the z71 uh, so, starts at 41395 Yeah, this is a weird animal, Roman, because mm. the trail bus, like we just showed, you know, has, you know, beefy tires and, of course, ground clearance. 
But the Z71 is almost becoming this kind of stylish city slash Afro truck. It's kind of changing its its core well, you value you from can't, before. You can't really have two kind of off-roady in one that area. live in the same world, right? <laughs> yes. Uh, we're looking at um, the same 2.7 liter inline four, of course. Ground clearance is down to 8.9 inches. Approach 29, break over 19, departure 23.3. Uh, off-road features include auto track two-speed transfer case with push-button controls, Andre. Well, at least it has that. Yeah. Automatic rear locking diff. Yes. G80? Uh, that's G80. That's also available in the Trail Boss. And red recovery hooks. Yes. But it also <laughs> can have, you can have street tires on this thing. Okay. You can get 20s with low profile tires. And so it's like it, a Tacoma Limited. That we kind just of, had at the or like the Sport. It's okay. already Sport ish. So it's a little bit more street biased, but still, of course, can go off road. So here's a big question for you Why is the Z71 more expensive than the Trail Boss? Which, it's, which means it's a little it's, bit more premium. Okay, so it's less off road capable, but more, more, more premium. More city slicker. Yes. Okay. Which is weird to me because Z71 over the last decades has been more of an off road package, plus, but it's changing. Plus, sorry, Andre. It gets standard cruise control. No, what? <laughs> as well as automatic locker, larger wheels, heated mirrors, and a 120 volt bed mounted power outlet. Wahoo. And, and that's why it's more expensive. Yep. All right, now let's go to its sister, cousin, brother. What do you want to call the brother? Uh, brother. Okay, the GMC but. Canyon. But so let's not spend a lot of time here because a lot of the features are identical except for price. Yep, so how much is the AT4X AEB edition? Well, so by the way, we have to thank our producer, Zach, for putting more together for providing these notes. But I recently got an email from one of our viewers. Yeah. And uh, they just configured an AEB edition AT4X at $69,035. So the Bison, ZR2 Bison, starts at $60,000. Here we're looking at a start price of sixty-five thousand. So you're paying about five thousand more than or nine thousand more than the Chevy. And if you if you you know check many of the boxes, which there are many of, yes, then you can go up to ten k more. Yeah, and that's I think for the most part you're buying the interior. So the eighty four X of course has a different interior from the Chevy Colorado ZR two, uh, and you're buying the badge because a lot of people you know just love that image. They love the badge of GMC. And I think that's what you're paying for. Yeah, I mean, the brand has been moving up market for at least as long as I've been doing this, right? So they're kind of the premium version of the Chevy. Um, it's like the Lexus versus Toyota. Exactly, right? yeah. A very good analogy. Yeah. Right? Uh, so same engine, so same horsepower. Um, ground clearance is 12.2 inches. I'm not going to bore you with all the approaches. So those right? specs are identical yeah. to the Colorado. And off-road upgrade, same thing. You're on 35-inch uh, Goodyear Wrangler territory tires. Be capable, be block capable, 8-inch. Capable front bumper. It doesn't have a winch, does it? No, no not. Just you have to add it later. Or on steel skip plates, Andre. Yep. Power locking front and rear diff, Multimatic DSSB dampers. Yeah, so if you would quickly review. So front and rear lockers are key, right? Because that's what Jeep Wranglers are known for, uh, the Rubicons. Now, the Raptor Ranger, Ranger Raptor has it. The ZR2 has it. AT4X also has it. So that's kind of the current state of the art. Yes, and it all costs money and fuel economy. Lots of money. And fuel economy. <laughs> Lots of money. Yes. What are, you so, get, what are you getting in yours driving it around? How much are you getting? What's your average, would you say? Oh, this is not off road. This is just you driving your family, going to work and such. So the trip meter. I'm talking about Colorado. The Colorado Trail Bus I have, the trip meter over the last, what, 600 miles yeah. is showing me 19 and a half. That's really good, actually. Well, yeah, but it's a mid sized truck. Like, it would, it would be good if it was a full size truck. Yeah, it's still it's a, a truck. Mid, it's a mid sized it's truck. Mid truck. Yes. Little truck. All right. Uh, AT4X starts at 56,995. Same engine. Uh, basically, it's you know very similar to the uh, what's the what's the, the ZR2 the, the ZR2. base ZR2. So it costs about uh, this one's about 8k more, dude. Yeah. So that's a big difference, dude. Yeah. So if you want more premium interior and different style, you got to pay a lot more. The rest of the specs are identical. There's also the AT4. 45,395. Yep. Uh, same engine once again. Turbo Max 2.7. And and we're not mentioning the basic 4x4 models in any of these, right? We're actually just showing you guys what's available for really off-road worthy trucks. All right, let's jump uh, to all of our Jeep fans. To the Jeep Gladiator, which has been kind of left to, to its own devices, Andre. They haven't done much with the Gladiator. We're still waiting for a 4x4 
E version of it, right. like the Wrangler. And we will be waiting another year, probably. Um, so, uh, you know, it went from being a very fast selling and very popular and very in demand truck to kind of being a slow seller. Uh, and I feel that's because new uh, product is a lifeblood of any uh, car company and, and it's really not all that new. So there are a number of models and we'll go over them. The other problem with it is for a long time it was one of the most expensive trucks, but now not so much. Yeah, and so we're between this 2023 and 2024 model switch, right? Uh, because the 2024, the Gladiator gets a couple of updates from the Wrangler as well, like the new style grille, uh, new airbags, uh, new seats, etc., etc., and also the new dash. So it's getting those updates very soon. Yeah, yeah. So it's not, they're, they're very minor updates. Yes. I mean, I think I think the Bronco forced those updates. So instead of manual adjusting seats, now you have oh, power seats. Power seats. Yeah. You got a little bigger screen, a little bit different uh, uh, front fascia with you know a different seven slot Jeep grille. Not, not a lot of changes. But let's talk about the Rubicon. Starts at fifty three thousand seven hundred seventy. You have one engine choice, Andre. What is that? Yeah, it's a 3.6 liter Pentastar V6 that's been around for, it seems like Ever. forever. Yeah. Yes. Uh, and but it's a good engine. Yeah, and it's, yeah, it's good. It's, yeah. you know, it's been put in every, well, every it used to be FCA now, it's still in product out there, and it's, it's a really good engine. Remember, the only way it struggles is when you max it out on the icon. It just it just revs. It just like, screams. Yeah, you rev the balls up. But it, it, it's always reliable. It has and been forever. And, you, and you're like, when is this engine going to like tap out? And it never, and it never taps <laughs> out. It just keeps going. It never cries, cries for mercy. Uh, 285 horsepower, 260 pound foot of torque. That's yeah. down from, uh, of course, the other competitors. Uh, also, um, there is no diesel anymore. Yeah, the 2023 model. Actually, they called it the Far Out Edition. I'm showing it on the screen. Far Out was insanely priced at 66465 uh, So really, really pricey, but that's the last diesel mid-size truck. And they haven't put the Hemi in, even though I would love them to do so. Would that be cool? The 392? Yeah, they could. Yeah? Yeah. It's not there yet. But maybe, maybe the 392 or, for you package. Or maybe like it that? will never come. We <laughs> think because they're, if they're switching to 4 by 8 technology, it'll, it'll never come. It'll probably never come. All right, uh, 33 inch BFG KO2 all terrain tires, yep. uh, Dana 44 axles, uh, front and rear Andre, selectable locking diffs, of course, you can triple lock it, electronic sway bar disconnect, a rock track part time transfer case, off road plus modes. It used to be the most off road worthy mid size pickup truck by far, but now not so much. Yeah, and I think another reason is because it has best so far approach angle of 43.4 degrees uh although the gladiator is known for that long wheelbase yeah, so it's uh, pretty so bad it's breakover breakover angle is one of the worst at 20.3 degrees all right now there's the mojave which lives underneath the rubicon starts at 53,000. uh yes same as the rubicon Why yeah so great? so it, it's you would think it kind of rubicon would be the the top model but here's what's happening the mojave is a little bit more for the desert runners and the Rubicon is a little bit more for rock crawlers. And I think that's why, if you look at this page, the Rubicon and the Mojave are priced identically. But the Mojave has a couple of unique features. Yes, uh, what are those? So a little bit more ground clearance, about half an inch more, just because of the way it's set up with its uh, unique uh, Fox shocks, 2.5 inch internal bypass shocks on the Mojave. Still the, basically the same tire size, but a little bit more uh, approach angle, 44.7 now, uh, so which is incredible approach angle, so you can crawl over that rock. Um, but uh, it's set up... I thought you said it was a desert runner. Why would you want to crawl over a rock? Because, well, it's lifted. <laughs> it's even lifted even further. So it's got 33-inch uh, Falcon, wild... But also performance hood. Yeah, 33-inch Wild Peak uh, uh, AT3W all-terrain tires as opposed to the BFG. Uh, same Dana... 44 rear front axle, rock rails, Fox 2.0 inch internal bypass shocks, one inch suspension, lift over the lower gladiator models, off-road mode, performance mode. Uh, you know, the cynical uh, journalist and the heart and the hunt. Me says that, you know, it's an appearance slash sticker package. Well, it has different color than toe hooks. Yeah, they're appearance. <laughs> All right. Yes. So um, here's the thing. When they launched the Mojave, they had big hopes for it, right? Uh -huh. They hoped that the Mojave would be the same, same gravitas as the Rubicon model, but for different terrain. Right. But I don't think it happened. Yeah, you need to uh, differentiate more. Yeah, it needs to be different. Maybe supercharge it. Yeah. 
How about that? Yeah, 392 it. Yeah. Yeah, so something. Yeah, exactly. that's, the, that's the whole story. Yeah, if you put that in there, then all of a sudden I'm on board. Okay. Right. If you want a little bit cheaper, go to the Willys, of course. Or do you say Willis? Starts at 48960 By the way, it could be Willys or Willis. I Googled it. You can say it both ways. Okay. Both are correct. So no fault, no foul. No fault, but, no fault. But wasn't this model more affordable in the past? I mean, this price is kicking up to towards 49000 already. I, I, you know, the numbers on these other trucks are so astronomically high that now that we're in the 40s, I'm kind of <laughs> kind of like, okay, 40,000. Yeah, no worries. Okay. Uh, ground clearance, 10 inches, um, 40.8 degree brake, uh, sorry, approach. Brake over is 18.4, departure is 25 degrees. Now you're up down to 32 inch Firestone destination. Um, multi MT2 tires, still you get rock rails, rear locker, off road mode plus. Uh, basically, um, it's a little bit cheaper of a gladiator. Yeah, but you're miss you're losing the front lock locker, right, from the Rubicon. You're losing the slightly bigger tires. You're now on 32s. You're losing some ground clearance. Have you driven by our local Jeep dealer recently? No. All, what happened? All they have are gladiators in terms of, you know, hard off road yeah. Gladiators and uh, regulars that are 4 by I, really? I haven't seen like a regular regular like a Grand Cherokee or a regular. No, I, no, no, no. I, there's Grand Cherokees, of course. Okay. I'm, I'm saying, but I haven't seen like a regular Willys uh, Grand. Oh, they're mostly fully optioned ones. Yeah, yeah. Either okay. the Rubicon, no, no, the Rubicon four by E's or the Gladiators. And I haven't looked at the mix of what Gladiators are out there. Um, but if you want the affordable one, Andre, you got to go with the Sport. Yeah, that's the one that tows the most too. Yeah, and the tow rating is still pretty high on the. Jeep Gladiator at 7,700 pounds. Yes, um, so. $41,515, uh, ground clearance, 10 inches, approach, yada yada. We've been through that, it's the same. Um, and this time it's a Jeep, you'll get Bridgestone Dueler AT tires by default. And if you want to tow the most, this is the one to go for, uh, but it's also kind of the bean can of the bunch. Yeah, and since it loses lockers now, the Sport, uh, is it good enough as a trail bus Colorado? Well, it's kind of in the same area now. All right, well, we have finally moved down the list, Ooh. wow, to the last mid-size truck uh, that is on the market, at least in the U United States, and the, that, of course, is the Toyota Tacoma, which we just had. And once again, we did a bunch of videos on altfl.com. Hey, you're getting good at this. <laughs> All right, let's start with the top dog. Trail Hunter, price to be... Determined coming in 2024, probably in the spring. We're thinking. Yeah, so we're thinking April or May. So the Trail Hunter is supposed to be this Overland model that is very popular these days, you know, where you could load it up with uh, a tent on top of it and more and more and more. Yeah, we've seen it, of course, uh, unveiled, and it does come with the inline four cylinder, but you get the IMAX, iForce Max, which is the mild hybrid. So uh, it's got a total of 326 horsepower, 465 pound foot of torque, which I think is the highest of all these vehicles. Oh yeah, by far. By far, yeah. Um, so it is it is a hybrid truck, but don't think it's meant to save fuel economy miles. It's morally, it's more meant to give you greater performance, more torque. So um, do we have fuel economy numbers on this? We don't. Uh, we don't, and we also don't haven't driven it. Yeah. So because it's not out yet. So. The Trail Hunter is one of those trucks, and the second one of those trucks is the TRD Pro. Let me quickly go through what you get. 11 inches of ground uh, clearance, approach to be determined, off-road upgrade, 1.5 rear to 2 inch front lift over the TRD off-road, old man emu, Andre, 2.5 uh, yep. inch position sensitive shocks, ARB bed rack, rear recovery points, 40, 33 Goodyear Territory RT tires. Uh, Trail Hunter is more of the rock Crawler overall adoption as opposed to TRD Pro. Yeah, I would say so because the shocks are not Foxes, right? So they they chose different shocks and they they kind of positioned it. I hope it has more payload. What too. do you think it's going to cost? I'm going to say at least sixty. Yeah, I think, I, I, I think it's going to be up there with the with ZR2, ZR2, ZR2 8F4X. Yeah, uh, uh, Raptor Ranger more than that, I suspect. And of course, the other one that that lives. In the stratosphere is the uh, Tacoma TRD Pro, pricing TBA still, of course. Same uh, engine, hybrid, 326 horsepower, ground clearance 11 inches, yada, yada, yada. But this time you get Fox shocks, yep. uh, quick switch um, three, uh, yeah. 1.5 inch rear, two inch front lift uh, over the uh, TRD off-road, uh, 33 inch Goodyear Terrain RT tire, ISO dynamic performance seats, which I think take up all the rear seat room. 
Yeah, there's not a lot of leg room in the rear of the Tacoma right now. And then the isodynamic seats, performance seats, basically add some shock absorbers to the seat itself. I've tried it out. Uh, I did a simulator. Uh, I haven't driven it, but I bounced in one. <laughs> and it's basically designed as kind of a hammock because it's got two pivot points. So you're kind of kind of sitting there and it's a little bit of a softer ride. ARB rear metal bumper with red recovery hooks. Yes, you have to have that. They should pick a different color. Every brand should have its own. I, I, if I were Toyota, go for green. Nobody's done green. Green. Yeah. It's a hybrid. Yeah. So you can do green. Yeah, do green. Yes. Okay, Cube's got, I think it's kind of a blue color, right? Yeah. All right, um, and Toyota builds a new TRD Pro as a go fast option against the Trail Hunter. Yep. So this is more of a like a ZR2 or a Raptor competitor, right? Also over 60K, you think? Yeah, we're guessing. for sure. Yeah. I'm guessing 60 at least. Yeah, probably. Yes. And at the end, of course, any uh, market adjustments that your which, local neighborhood Toyota dealer decides to add to it. Which could be big. Which could be big, yeah. Because we know that the old TRD Pro had market adjustments. So I would suggest uh, if you want one, uh, shop around, be willing to travel, find a dealer and, that doesn't do that. And try not to be the first to buy one because yeah. the first person will pay it. guys, just don't, just don't buy it. Yeah. Just don't pay over sticker and there will be no over sticker, but somebody's got to be out there trying to flip it on, bring a trailer out there. Yeah. You know yeah. how that goes. Yeah. All right. Uh, now we're talking about the ones that, that kind of are in my world or in our world, the one that we're trying to get. And that is, of course, the TRD Off-Road. Starts at 44,395. Now we've got a little bit less power, so we don't have the uh, hybrid. It's a non-hybrid. 270 horsepower, 375, 317 pound foot of torque, eight-speed automatic. Manual puts out a little bit less, a little bit more. 370 horsepower. No, no, that's a typo. 270. Okay, 270. Yeah, 270 horsepower. 270. So the manual. Out less, yeah. But the manual is available, so it that's is. good news. It's great. The other only, the only other manual truck is the Gladiator. So ground clearance 9.5 inches, approach 32.5, brake over 24.7, departure 26. Uh, without the tow hitch, um, off-road upgrades include Bill Stein or Bill Steen, whichever way you say it, monologue remote reservoir shocks, 32 uh, inch all-terrain tires as stock, 33 inch Goodyear Territory RT tires are optional, crawl control, multi-terrain select, downhill assist control, yada yada yada, yada all the stuff that you usually get. Uh, the off-road also tech comes on the TRD Pro Trail Hunter. Now we just had this truck in here, but we had the limited. Yeah. So we so we didn't have the rear locker, we didn't which have, the TRD off-road could have. We didn't have the off-road tires. Uh, we also didn't have disconnectable front sway bar, which the off-road model could have as well. So that's what uh, Toyota is adding to their truck. So we're trying to buy one of those. Um, we were hoping it going to be before the end of the year, but that's probably not going to happen. It's not happening because they assist the end of the year. Yeah, well, I think you know, what we've been told is that uh, the EPA has yet to officially confirm the numbers, and so until the EPA uh, basically uh, confirms it, certifies, that. yeah, uh, they can't sell them. So um, we're waiting. We'll let you know uh, as soon as we can get one. Uh, but there are a lot of videos, alltfl.com, yes. that we produced, including. Uh, um, the MPG most, loop. The most interesting one that we published, if you're watching this or listening to it, yesterday or today, which is how much more fuel economy do you get or don't get when you take that massive chin off? Yeah. Because Andre and Nathan did that because we want to know. Yeah. And the difference was surprising. All right. Well, we got to wrap this up, dude. We are. Uh, pre runner is there. So, pre runner truck is a new, it's kind of like a Pro X yep. Frontier, but the pre runner is also there. It's, of course, standard turbocharged engine, rear locker, but it's two wheel drive only, which is a unique truck. Um, I would suggest you consider it if you don't want four wheel drive. SR5 4x4 is kind of where it starts. So, this is. 38,395, and the uh, pre runner is 39,595. Yeah, and the SR5 4x4 is kind of like an FX4 competitor, right? So it's not doesn't have a lot of fancy features, uh, and it only has about 10.7 inches of ground clearance. All right, Woo. there you have it, guys. Thank you for sticking with us all the way through this list. But we hope that if you're looking at buying an off-road worthy mid-sized truck, uh, that this has been helpful to you. Uh, thank you to whoever edits this video because there's going to be a lot of work involved. <laughs> so I want to thank our team. But more importantly, Andre, let me ask you: which of these trucks? Uh, Given you know what you know now and being a Colorado owner, would you buy? Would you st still stick with the Colorado, or would some of these other trucks tempt you away from it? I'm tempted. Okay, what are you so, tempted by? Uh, well, I know that TFL, our company, is yes. buying a tier the off road Tacoma, so yes. I'm not tempted by that. But what I am tempted by is the new Ranger. Yeah, me too. I think that might be yeah. the truck of the year. Uh, I also think that's going to be another one that's going to have huge market adjustments. 
Uh, and, uh, you know, Ford has been really struggling with their popular models. And I'm not just talking about the Bronco. The Maverick has the same issue, right? They just can't keep Even up. the Raptor, the F-150 Raptor has been kind of delayed. Yeah, and, and we would have probably bought that um, if uh, we hadn't just had the Raptor R. So what we try to do is to be as fair as possible. So buy different brands for our year so that we have a sampling of everything that's out there. And we just had the Raptor R, so it would be hard to go back and get another Arranger. Yeah. But I'm super excited about our uh, Tacoma. I can't wait to off-road it. I can't wait to take it up the Ike Gauntlet, which is things we haven't done. And I yeah. can't wait to see how reliable it is. That's why we buy these things, because it's our own money, our skin's in the game. And when things break, we'll let you know. Or if they don't break, we'll let you know. And we'll see you next time at OldTFL.com. Ciao.